Hello, everyone. So I'm very happy to be here tonight with all of you for this uh, launch of the Afrotech Fellowship Connect, which is a session that will focus on discussions and panel discussion with guest speakers from the Afrotech community, but also from the Mauritian uh, community. So tonight we will be focusing on one specific theme because all of the Afritech Connect a session will focus on different themes. And uh, tonight, the theme that we've chosen is spatial technology. So before I continue, I would like to in introduce our guest speaker tonight, who is Anne-Sophie Virasami, who is not only a guest tonight, but is also an alumni of the Afritech Fellowship and has also helped a lot as a team member for the second cohort and is still helping us so much. So hello, Sophie. And uh, for, all, uh, for those of you who don't know who she is, and Sophie is passionate about the ocean world. She has a Bachelor of Science in Marine Science and work as a technical officer at the Ministry of Blue Economy. Her hobbies include scuba diving, underwater photography and videography. She loves shooting videos of her underwater adventures to showcase the beauty of marine world. She aspires to become a scientific, a scientific diver and help protect, restore, and sustain marine resources. So welcome, Anne Sophie, again. And um, before I pass it to Anne Sophie, I would like to uh, put um, take some time to explain to you tonight for those who don't know yet what GIS is and how GIS has been implemented within the Afrotech Fellowship. So. Spatial technology, or GIS, which is Geographic Information System, is a series of tools and software leveraging location intelligence to facilitate decision making, for example, Google Maps. So GIS was at the heart of the creation of Afritech Fellowship, and the role of GIS within the Afritech Fellowship changed throughout the fellowship itself. Firstly, it was an idea, then it was a skill, that uh, fellows learn from, and then later it became a solution. So the idea was how it formed part of our core theme. So earlier I said that it, it is one of our core theme. And next to special technology, there is also inclusive leadership, project management, and wellness. So it was important for us to leverage this idea and to introduce this through the Afritech Fellowship, since it is a tool that is very important. Then later on, through our curriculum and workshops, and also through story maps, fellows were able to learn this idea and make it a skill for them to do better introduction of themselves, utilizing the story map tool. Later on, they would also use GIS as a way to create new solutions with their capstone project. Additionally, I would like to say that GIS was also helpful to us on an administrative perspective for when we had to create surveys for feedback or visual, visuals for the reports. So yes, GIS is, key, is a key component of the Afritech Fellowship. So now I will pass, in, pass it to Anne-Sophie who is here tonight. So maybe you have a few words to say to introduce yourself, Ansavi. So hello everyone and thank you Angel for inviting me here today as a guest. And thank you for this awesome grounding session. I really miss that since uh, the, the cohort of Afritech uh, ended. And so, yeah, you're. I think you already said everything on me, like mm -hmm. the more important part, like I love scuba diving, and my passion for underwater photography and videography, but also in marine conservation, which is one of my most passion. So thank you again. To be, uh, I'm happy to be here. And we are happy to have you. And like she said, she was actually <laughs> our, our little mermaid on uh, the <laughs> Afritech Fellowship cohort. So we will start by maybe, uh, Anne Sophie, could you tell us how how was it for you to discover the GIS world as a fellow on the Afrotech Fellowship Cohort One? So, well, when I discovered GIS, it started with a feeling of 
uh, being frightened and anxious because it was the first time I was doing GIS. And, but it ended on a self note of being, uh, it was a worth it experience and also very fascinating. Uh, like, even though I have a BSc degree in marine science, I unfortunately did not have uh, an introduction to GIS when I was doing my degree. So I really was exposed to the GIS world when doing the architect fellowship. And it was really a worth it experience. Uh, knowing about the different GIS tool, we'll see, which is one of my favorite uh, story map because it helped me showcase uh, some of my biggest passion, which is scuba diving and also showcasing the marine world. And for me, it has always been a dream to be able to show people what you feel when going underwater, you know, like the marine world, the marine organism, and just the feeling of being underwater. And it has always been one of my dreams to share this passion and this feeling with as much people as possible, which I actually, I thought it was quite difficult or even impossible because even though I was sharing on social media, still, I didn't feel like I was sharing it, like really sharing this passion. And until I, I discovered the GIS world, thanks to Afritech. And like, they show me through uh, GIS tools, how actually I can make this dream become possible. And there's one little anecdote that I really like to share about how I have been able to achieve this dream. Like when we started the cohort one uh, with the, fe the fellows and I, and of course, as usual, Angel, you can, you can access it. Like I love talking about diving. Like the first thing I can meet it someone does. and say, hi, I'm Sophie. Uh, what's your name? Nice to meet you. I love diving. Do you want to come there with me someday? <laughs> and I like that. And then when I was telling the fellows about how I love diving and how to try diving, and they were all like, no, I'm scared of water. No, I don't know how to swim. No, uh, I don't want to. And there's one particular fellow who, uh, like, she was like, I don't, I love my life too much. I don't want to die. I will dive. <laughs> And the same fellow, oh, she's on the call now. <laughs> Hi, Natasha. <laughs> yes. And so the yeah. same fellow who said she didn't want to dive ended up pestering me for like one year to bring her dive. And it was actually thanks to uh, the personal story map that the uh, story map sorry, that we have to do uh, during, uh, it was one of the assignments we have to do in, in Africa Fellowship. And so we had to do a personal story map. And of course, if you talk about personal story map, I just have to showcase my, my passion for diving. And so I incorporated a lot of pictures and video underwater. And when the other fellows saw like my story map, they were all so uh, amazed and happy of, uh, uh, of, seeing, of seeing all these, uh, these, uh, these marine creatures. So uh, it kind of made me happy because I was able to share uh, this passion and through story map, I have been able to showcase how how story uh, how the marine world is really amazing and really I'm so grateful to the GIS tool which has allowed me to do that. Thank you so okay. much for this answer, which was really great. And I, it's true, it was really difficult for some fellows. And like she said, <laughs> some of them were traumatized at the beginning and then, uh, but even us, for me, uh, Anne Sophie talked about diving so much that I did one with her. So she was very, <laughs> her story map was very, very well written because it convinced a lot of people to go underwater with her, even though we were scared of it. So I guess it was really nice. So thank you, Anne Sophie. And um, do you still use GIS today, or do you plan to maybe leverage it in your future project? Please tell us more a bit about this. So, yeah, unfortunately, I don't use GIS more, uh, like as often as I wish I would. But I do in the future uh, intend to use it uh, more, mostly for my future studies and also for some personal projects. Uh, so I uh, I intend to pursue uh, further studies in the field of marine science. And actually, before uh, really knowing about the GIS world, I was uh, when I was talking about going further in my studies, I was only uh, thinking about uh, just uh, sticking to the marine conservation, species management, 
or marine biology. I haven't really thought I could really uh, incorporate GIS, not because I didn't want to, but because I didn't really know what GIS was. But now that I know what it is, I definitely want to incorporate it in my studies. I see it like it's an amazing tool that I definitely need to use it so that I can uh, create more impact with my researchers and also create as much awareness as I can which is it uh, in Mauritius, like showcasing the different uh, marine organisms that we can protect and also go more towards marine conservation. As I do believe that with the use of GIS tools, we can do like the mapping of endemic uh, uh, resources and also endangered ones and we could come up with better um, conservation and restoration uh, management plan. And also for uh, my personal project is like it's more towards my capstone project, the one that I had to do for uh, a free tech fellowship, which I personally don't consider as complete yet because I just I got I did it in a way like uh, to to uh, it was a project that uh, it really uh, means a lot to me because it was towards alleviating the fear of people towards diving. And where, so I'm just gonna give a brief overview of, of how was my capstone project. So I mostly incorporated the, uh, so, uh, sorry, I mostly emphasized on people who haven't like never dived. And so I really wanted to showcase how diving is a, a safe sport and also an amazing sport also. And therefore, I did a mapping of the different dive sites that we have in Mauritius and some dive centers and incorporated some pictures and video, of course. Uh, but what I plan to keep doing with the capstone project and also improve it and ameliorate it by uh, what I wanted to do, like go more in broad, having more uh, included, include like most of the dive that we have around Mauritius and classify it around like the different levels, like it can be for beginners, intermediate or advanced levels, but also incorporate the different marine organisms that you can see there, the different uh, marine structures that you can see, like correct diving, or sometimes you can also have uh, underwater boulders or underwater kind of wall you have also. Uh, because we also have some people who like the dive some places to go look for specific things. Um, and I see it like a very uh, interesting uh, idea to like incorporate all the information uh, in, in a story map, which will be more interactive and also uh, having all the different sites. Uh, we also, uh, me and Guy, we have a, a project of uh, doing a story map for a competition, like on conservation. So the fact that uh, I am in the marine conservation and Angael, you are in the most terrestrial conservation. So we wanted to showcase like the different aspect of conservation in like both, uh, in both the terrestrial and marine uh, uh, aspect. And we also have a, third, uh, a fellow who is also working together with, uh, together with us on it. And she's more towards the uh, uh, interaction with people and how it, uh, conservation among uh, the people is can be uh, can be done. So this is basically what I plan to do with GIS. But I really definitely going to use it more in the future. That's really nice and uh, true. There's so many projects, and I'm sure there's so many projects that Anne-Sophie will be working with GIS in the future because she has a lot of ideas. And <laughs> as she said, we are working on a story map together. And I've seen firsthand how she can really leverage this tool to create more, ad, um, maybe a campaign around what, why is it important to conserve the marine life as well? Because there's a lot of um, focus on corals or over specific species, but through this story map, and Sophie also wants to showcase how it's uh, together as an ecosystem, how it's important to protect them. And I will ask you to stay tuned to maybe read our, uh, our story map when it's ready, we will let you know. So thank you, Anne Sophie, again for this. And uh, what was the challenge for you when you started this journey in the GIS world? How was it difficult? And what were the things that maybe told you, oh, I don't think that's for me, but then you step up and then you were like, okay, maybe I should do it. Yeah, definitely. So for me, the 
biggest challenge I, I have to face when starting the GI, in the GIS world was really the imposter syndrome. Gosh, that <laughs> this is really, um, you know, that little voice in your head telling you like, what you're doing, you can't do that. And like, I really ha heard it a lot <laughs> throughout the fellowship and mostly when I was working on my capstone project and I was struggling with some of the GIS tool and I was just having like a mental breakdown and say like, oh God, what I'm doing here, why I did that. <laughs> and it was really str uh, uh, struggling. I was really struggling sometimes. But thankfully, the architect team was awesome and still is awesome. So they were always here when we were having issues with our capstone or with any tools that we were trying to use. So they were so welcoming and friendly and present. And the fact that also architect was a safe space where we could be ourselves. So we didn't feel like at one point, even though uh, I was struggling, when I was having Veronique, who is the founder, uh, co-founder of Architect, and having Angel both like being here for us. And at some point I said like, okay, I'm struggling with me. Uh, I'm not like, I'm not worth it or I'm not achieving it. So with time I've been able to like talk to myself and be able to, uh, to complete the capstone project, even with some struggling mental breakdown, crying sometimes. <laughs> it, it, was, it was indeed uh, an experience, which also was uh, for myself as a personal growth uh, because sometimes going above this imposter syndrome is very hard. It's, I still have it sometimes even in my current job, having and when I'm struggling with something and I always have this feeling of, uh, wow, was I really worth uh, being here or why, why I'm here? Like, I feel like I'm not, um, I'm not in the right place. But uh, thankfully, uh, it, it did get better. So, yeah. And maybe some of the challenges that I had to face was time management, like uh, having to uh, bear with uh, my current job and like rushing home to just have the assignment completed and working as a capstone sometimes. Uh, it was sometimes also challenging, but most of it, it was fine and it was a really worth experience. That's really nice. And I think, how uh, it's very relevant what you were saying about uh, imposter syndrome. And I'm pretty sure that most of fellow, other fellows of the Africa Fellowship has felt it once. And maybe mm -hmm. so much of you did feel it as well. And I think what was really nice to see was that all of us felt like we were alone. Like we were the only one feeling this. But when we came together and discussed about this, it was really nice to see how we can help each other. And I'm happy I'm happy that you're talking about this and I'm happy that you feel like the Afrotech Fellowship was a safe space for you and that you could be yourself because one of the, it was very scary for me and Vero at the beginning because we thought that it's, GIS is a big subject and it's tricky at first. But you need to want to to work towards it, and you need to want to do it. And um, yourself, and Sophie, and a lot of her, of her fellows, and some are here tonight. So much of you actually really wanted to learn about GIS, and I think that's what impacted the fellowship, but also the fact that you did it together. It was really community, and it's so nice to hear about this again. So yeah, that's true. And actually, sorry. So I yeah, wanted to no, go ahead. More. <laughs> yeah. So what also uh are really grateful and so thankful that it's for our free tech is like we had the speakers uh who also shared and we have different speakers from uh different fields of GIS who also spoke about their own experience and their own challenges in GIS and also not only in GIS but in their life also particularly and they all I think like we all have this imposter uh, syndrome yeah. like we we all have this feeling and I think we believe it every day and having people feeling uh, comfortable telling us about how they feel about it it was really refreshing also like just a feeling of knowing that you're not alone uh, how this is feeling it was really, really great. It's nice. 
Thank you. So I have one other question for you. So what advice would you give to people who don't know what GIS is and what GIS world would be or what, how it could help them? And would you recommend GIS to those people and how maybe how would you tell them to try it? So um, definitely for people who haven't like never did GIS, I would surely encourage them to do it. Uh, like go already like go Google what GIS is. That's what I did when I started the architect fellowship, like what's the definition of GIS? And also go for short courses and or talk to people who did GIS uh, because it is a really worth its experience and uh, to know about the different applications that can be used for GIS because it's not only in the STEM field but also in different field also to have it in art also some people I used it at the beginning in administration also and for doing surveys like GIS being used everywhere so I really encourage those who never did GIS or want to try it, like, go for it. Don't be scared. Like we all started being scared of GIS and I think it's normal, uh, but going for some short courses, I think there are a lot of free short courses that you can have on GIS and like learn what it is and the different tools, how to use them. And I think something most people we fell in love with a story map. I don't know why, but <laughs> most people really love story map, like myself included. And really it's, it's really worth it to go for it. And I definitely would recommend it to all people around me. I actually started doing it since I started Afritech <laughs> once I, when I was the code one. And I really talk about it to my colleagues, to friends, to classmates from university, to my, I even tried convincing my sister to, to enroll in Afritech. <laughs> so, but it, it's a really worth it. Uh, worth it to go for it even though you're scared and also uh, you just have to try it you might like uh, might like it or might also not like it it's also possible like right? each person has their own feels because you're more comfortable with but just trying it is also a good experience and also because i why i would recommend people to go for gis also because i i personally believe it as another skill set you can have like, uh, for example, I have a BS in my science. Even though I don't necessarily need GIS in my field, still I see it as an, a plus to have it. Even though if I want to go for a job, even not in marine field, but I still uh, can go in the GIS field. I can go for consultancy. Like it's, it's just like adding a plus to my CV. It's just adding a plus to myself. And it also kind of, give you a personal growth because you'll find when you'll be able to achieve a different uh like uh, you'll be able to handle different gis tool you'll feel such a feeling of satisfaction like this awesome feeling <laughs> it's really great and really you should go for this go for a try gis is awesome Thank you so much, Asafi. And I think um, that's very important what you said about how it's an additional skills because I, uh, I was on LinkedIn this morning and I saw a video when someone was, a woman was saying how she has been very, uh, she had bad reviews about herself because with her surroundings, because she has been hoping from different jobs so every two years she would change jobs, but it just depends on people, you know? So some people just can't stay in a job for a long time. And she said that it, for a long time, she saw it as, as a very difficult aspect of her life because people would judge her. But then at some point she realized that herself, she felt okay with this because she translated this negative feedback that people were saying into saying that each job that she is taking is a new adventure it's a new skill set and it's a new tool that you add into your toolbox so sometimes we think that a change or a new skills doesn't does not adapt to our field or for what we are doing but it might actually make you better in your field or make you see this field you're working on in another angle and i think that's really nice and i think that's one of the great things about gis and 
about this exactly do you think that um some people might uh, from because sometimes gis is often associated with science or stem field do you think it can be applied to other other fields yeah definitely because i i don't think gis is only for uh for the field of science or like for example like i imagine it for like a photographer like, like he like shooting pictures of uh, different things like they can like using the two story map they can just showcase their pictures showcase what they feel through the pictures and also like just write uh what was the what the picture represents to them where the picture was taken and even like include a map of where the picture was taken so definitely when we look at other on a broader picture gis is not only for uh for the mari uh, for scientific aspect or just like for the stem field it's like the board just it's really uh really imagination being uh like how how you want to use gis it just it can be applied in any field like i personally believe you can just apply it in any field you want it just it just really have your imagination is like what what really can help you guide you through how you can use gis yeah i think that, i think you're right and um i don't know if you remember there was one of our speakers who is in the GIS field, and he, she is a special analyst, and she was telling us that it's very difficult for her to explain what she actually does. And often what she would do is when people would ask her, what do you do in life? And instead of just saying, so I work as a GIS analyst, she would just ask that person what they do and then associate uh, GIS with that person works and then just explain to them well GIS could be applied to your field and the fact that she actually has the audacity to ask those person first it shows us how GIS can actually be applied to everything because she doesn't really know what uh, the person would answer but she still mm -hmm. asks that question all the time so I think it tells us really well how GIS can adapt to everything so yeah, that's all the questions I had for you, Anne-Sophie. Thank you so much. I don't know if there is any question from um, the audience. Is there anyone who would would want to ask a question to Anne-Sophie or maybe a question about uh, what Afritech Fellowship is, what Afritech Connect is? Because I know that some of you weren't here at the beginning when we were talking about this. So if you want to learn more about this, please let us know. And also, if you want to know more about Anne-Sophie's career and what does she think about GIS? So please unmute yourself or just send us a message in the chat. Oh, if you are interested to go dive someday, just let me know. <laughs> I can bring you that. You can also just, if you have a comment, or maybe I see that there are a lot of fellows in this chat on this call tonight. So if some of I do I, I do actually have a comment. Um, oh, so, sure. so first comment is like I met Anne Sophie in the Afritech Fellowship. We became friends from that and she I don't know how she manipulated me because two <laughs> years ago me going diving, this idea was literally preposterous. This would never happen. <laughs> but she still with her story map, I don't know how, she showed me pictures of fish. She manipulated me with her story map. Now I'm going diving with her and I'm still like trying to tease her. When are we going to dive again all the time? Every time we meet, take me diving. So see how powerful her story map was that she convinced me a very scary person who doesn't like to do uh, very risky things to go diving. And I think this was amazing. And the AfriTech Fellowship, as itself is an amazing space because I was able to learn lots of things and I've developed myself in a way because the way I am right now, I was at like that when I started the fellowship and it was an amazing experiment because I get to meet you and every one of you and it was a great space and I'm very glad for that. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much, Natasha. And Sophie, do you want yeah, to, to reply her on that point? 
Uh, yeah, sure. Like Natasha is an amazing married. Actually, I'm uh, I'm considering her as being my next dive buddy. So she still needs some more dive, but uh, she she she's very elle très prometteuse. <laughs> so, uh, so I'm count, uh, counting on you, Natasha. So your next step is doing your uh, dive qualification. I'm waiting for you. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Natasha was also my um, accountable buddy uh, for the captain project. Where I say. So uh, it was really nice having her, like being paired with her because she's an amazing soul also. And like all the architects, they were, they were all amazing soul and amazing women with different uh, background stories. And they also did a very awesome capstone project. Uh, Natasha also captain for an amazing, so more on the chemistry part, but uh, it was something that she loved. And she, she we, like she was known as being the chemist uh, of the architect uh, fellowship. So, yes. <laughs> and, and I'm still amazed myself how I was, how I was able to convince her to go die because she was among all the fellows. She was the one who was category, like she won't go die. And it, I was the first surprise when she said, like, I wanted to go try that. Sorry. Okay. I'll bring you down. <laughs> want to say that well this is the power of GIS right here but I think yeah. it's also thanks to you because I think uh you had I mean like you say you eat you sleep you if you could stay underwater <laughs> that would be your life so I think that GIS helped the story map helped but uh, it was your soul like you said your story map was full of soul and I think that's what great with GIS as well, where it can show you how each way, like the different people you using those tools can showcase it in a different way and a unique way. And um, I would actually be sending uh, to you on the audience tonight uh, a follow-up um, email after that, where I will share the story map of fellows so that you can you will be able to see Anne-Sophie's story map, but also all of our fellows from cohort one and cohort two. So I would invite you to look at it and don't be scared to reach out to us if you want to learn more about what the AfriTech is, uh, the AfriTech Fellowship is and what AfriTech Connect is. And uh, we will. it will be a pleasure for us to get back to you. So is there any more questions or comments from the audience tonight? I guess there's no comments <laughs> and no questions. <laughs> um, so I would say thank you to all of you who came up tonight. This video will be available for, uh, um, it's recorded, so it will be available on YouTube as from uh, maybe end of this week. So you will be able to look at it, to review it um, on its whole, and you will be able to also share it with uh, your community and the audience as well. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much, Anne Sophie. I don't know if you have any last comments or any last sentence before we close this call tonight. So yes, one last comment. So thank you, Angel, again for having me tonight, and thank you everyone who has been here. Uh, so it was nice sharing uh, my experience as an architect fellow, but also learning about GIS. And again, uh, for people who never tried GIS or heard about it and never uh, was scared to try what it was. So just go for it. And really, it, you, won't, you won't be disappointed because it really has a lot of uh, application. And also, like, you, if you can go also look at different story map also, which is very amazing, seeing how different uh, people showcase their story and also about, uh, like, about the countries, about the island, and like most on conservation, but also on different topics. Also. So we are also talking about conservation because I'm in the science sphere, but <laughs> also about different topics, which is also great. So yeah, and if someone never tried diving, also don't be scared to try. <laughs> Always like, trying to recruit. <laughs> of course, of course. Like, like go see the marine world, it's amazing. It's uh, beautiful. But yeah, so thank you again. And I was really happy to be here. Thank you again, Anda. Thank you again, everyone who was here. Thank you, Anne-Sophie. So 
I would like to remind you that uh, RAF Tech Connect actually it's launched today, but also throughout the month of March. So throughout the month of March, it will be focused on women of the Afritech Fellowship because it's the women's story month. But uh, afterwards, we will be inviting more women in STEAM, but also people of the Mauritian society to discuss topics centered around our core theme. So I repeat, so it's uh, project management, inclusive leadership, special technology like tonight and wellness and it is a space where everybody can come and ask their question and discuss and if you want to unmute yourself at some point or let us know if you want to discuss the different points you're more than welcome so i would invite you to reshare for the next upcoming events and after women history month it will also uh, still be happening but with different titles and stay tuned on our social medias and we will get back to you Thank you so much, everyone, for being here tonight. And I will get back to you on a follow-up email. Thank you. Bye.